Welcome back, everyone. After getting yelled at by so many of you, I figured we should actually finish part two of our hearing protection comparison. In this second video on hearing protection, we'll take a look at the Caldwell Emac Shadows, Peltor Sport Tactical 300s, and the Sword and Supreme Pro X LEDs. So I do have more headsets, but it took me like a year to come back and do part two, so I recommend you just be happy with what you get. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get started. So as I said, this is the second part in our active hearing protection headset comparison. Active hearing protection means that it blocks the sound and then uses microphones and other like wizarding tricks so that you can actually have conversations around loud noises. Oh, real quick, for those families that have children with special needs or that just don't do well in loud spaces, I found some of these higher tier headsets work really well for them and it's what I use with my son. Then your child can simply turn down the volume of the surrounding area if they find it to be too loud or too overbearing. And I'll mention which headsets work the best in that application as we go through everything. All right though, let's get back to it. We'll continue from our first video where we look at all the features of each and then look over all the functions as we increase in price. And the idea is to use these videos so that you can find that sweet spot. So you can buy only the features you need and then not pay a bunch of extra for things you don't need or want. And I'll put a link up here to our first video if you wanna look at some of those headsets also. We started with the lowest cost in the first video and worked our way upwards as we started with the Caldwell Emacs Pros, then move on to the Walker Razor Slims and ended with the Caldwell Power Cords. And here you can see all the final rankings that we got from our first video of all of those headsets. And I'm really excited to show you some of the higher tier headsets as you really get a lot more bang for the buck as you increase in price. But it's important to remember that just because it's the most expensive, it doesn't mean it's the best one for you. Get what you need and not what some guy on YouTube needs or tries to sell you. Before we get too far, I wanna say thanks to Caldwell and Sorden for providing some of these headsets you'll see us test here today. And just like in our first video, I'll drop some links down in the description to any of these Caldwell and Sorden headsets if you're interested in purchasing any of these. I'll also include links to all the other headsets we're showing too. So today we'll begin with the AirPod style Caldwell Emacs Shadows, then look at the Peltor Sport 300s, and I'll give you some foreshadowing. I absolutely love these, particularly for the price. Then we'll finish up with our Sword and Supreme Pro X LEDs. And I do have some higher tier headsets with comm capabilities from T headsets. And I'd love to get some Opscore amps and some Peltors to see how that super high tier really compares. Because spending that kind of money blindly well, I'd be pretty upset if they weren't exactly what I wanted. So hopefully I can put that video together for you in the future. So I wanna repeat the first video and give you some way to compare the headsets besides just looking at what they're made of and how it works. So keeping the first video rolling, we'll again do a series of rankings after we look over all the details and the function and we'll do those scores based on price, comfort, noise reduction rating, indoor shooting protection, outdoor shooting protection, sound quality, and other use cases. All right, enough talking. Let's start looking at the Caldwell Emacs Shadows. Looking at the Emacs Shadows, one of the first cool things you'll notice is that the whole thing comes in this really awesome carrying case, like we saw with the power cords. Inside the case is, well, oh, another case. Well, we'll put this to the side for now. All right, so what else is in here? Looks like we have a charging cable along with rubber and foam inserts of different sizes. And the instructions say to use the foam inserts if you're gonna use them for hearing protection, like the other ones are for recreational use. So we'll only use the foam for all of our testing, but they don't form a super tight seal. So that may be a problem when we actually go out and do some shooting with them. Opening the inner case, we see the actual Emacs shadows with our Left ear on the right side and the right ear on the left side. Yeah, it'll mess with you, trust me. Each earpiece is small and only has this small area with the Caldwell marking sticking out down from the ear. 
The ear tips can be easily changed out to different sizes or change them out based on what you're doing. The carrying case that holds both earpieces acts as a charger also. So you could technically use each headset for like five hours and then put it back in the case to recharge. And I think the case recharges it like two or three times back to full before you have to recharge the case. Either way, I've never had an issue with battery life and I rarely even charge this at all. So that part of this headset is absolutely fantastic. Now to turn them on, off, pause, pair with Bluetooth, volume, and all the other functions, it all uses the same one inch touch area like a triple tap for voice assistant, or hold for two seconds to ignore a call, or hold for one second to power it off. It's a lot. And if you're wondering how well all those functions work with just that one little button on the side, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. it. It does not work well. To turn them on, you just hold down on the Caldwell logo with your finger, and then to pair, you just hold down the button, the same button, until it begins to flash. To pause a song, you double tap the side, and to increase the volume, you swipe up, and to decrease the volume, you swipe down. All these functions, plus even more, are in the manual. And I have no idea how to use most of the functions, and I've been using these for like a year. There's also two hearing modes on these, active and passive hearing. In passive hearing, it doesn't pipe in any of the outside sound, but you get the loudest Bluetooth volume. And in active hearing, it cuts the Bluetooth volume to a low level and pipes in all the outside sound, allowing you to talk and communicate even around loud sounds. Test, test, test. This is the sound of my voice with it in active hearing. But like I said, to swap modes, you gotta hold down that button for two seconds. But with all the other functions being in the same area, it becomes pretty problematic. Now, if you're stationary, it's not so bad, but trying to use these eight billion functions while running or doing an activity means you'll probably do God knows what instead. Half the time I turn them off just trying to turn up the volume. I think I even answered a call once. No idea how I did that. The case does automatically turn off the earpieces when they're placed in their <laughs> intuitive positions of the left on the right and the right on the left. Well, as long as you didn't touch anything. If when placing them back in the container, you press the logo too long, they'll get stuck in pairing mode and then they won't charge at all and they'll just sit there pairing and discharge the whole battery while <laughs> sitting in the case. Overall, these things really need a second button. Having all the functions on a small device, all based on touch, is a bit of a pain to use. And a bit of a pain is me being nice. I've learned to never, ever, ever touch that Caldwell logo. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the tests. And for the first test for the Caldwell Emac Shadows is price. And I give these three stars for a price of around 80 to $100. Apparently there's also a pro version for 200, but I've not played with those. And from my time with active in-ear hearing protection, I think my recommendation would be the same as these and any other super expensive in-ear hearing protection. All right, what's next? Oh, comfort. All right, so for comfort, I give the Emac Shadows five stars. As these are small and discreet, I found them to be incredibly comfortable and use them for any loud outdoor activity. The Emac shadows stay out of the way and would sit in your ear without giving you any sort of hot spots. I've no joke probably ran two or 300 miles with these headsets in and they're really pretty great in terms of comfort. All right, so the next test is noise reduction rating and I give these a three. There's nothing bad, but nothing insane, as we find the 23 decibel noise reduction rating a pretty good standard amongst most headsets. All right, then, so moving to our next test, which is the indoor hearing protection, I give these a one. I highly recommend doubling up hearing protection indoors, and that would mean placing hearing protection over these, which would just be a little silly. And then if you have another set of hearing protection over your hearing protection, just use those and some foamies. Anyway though, uh, let's go to the next test, which is the outdoor hearing protection, and I'll give these a three. Like most in-ear hearing protection, there is still a fairly noticeable bite when using high calibers. Pistol shooting was 
all right in terms of protection, but rifle shooting had a sharp bite to my ears. I wouldn't want to shoot large calibers, even outdoors, with these on. And it's not a fault of the Emac shadows, though. I found almost the same result from in-ear hearing protection from pretty much any brand. And I've seen a lot of headsets, and hopefully you'll see some of those later on in another part of this series. All right, then for the next test is gonna be sound quality, and I give these two stars with the bonus star for Bluetooth quality. Yeah, we can do bonus stars. And this is slightly confusing as the quality to listen to Bluetooth music is incredible, but the actual active hearing protection itself is somewhere between halfway okay and pretty bad. It's very obvious you're listening through a poor microphone. Here's the sound of my voice naturally so you can see how it hears without any modification to the sound. And here's the active hearing protection. Hearing what it sounds like with the Bluetooth music playing and hearing my voice. And here's the sound just naturally, hearing what I sound like coming through the actual active hearing protection of the Caldwell Emacs Shadows. <laughs> it doesn't sound that great. And even though both of the headsets are independent of one another, I found the actual omnidirectional sound, like pinpointing where a sound is coming from, to be pretty difficult to discern. All right then, for our last category is our other use cases, and I give these a five. I use these Emacs Shadows for almost everything, from running and lifting at the gym to just having a discreet headsets for flying on airplanes or doing literally everything in the yard. But what I don't use them for pretty much ever is shooting. They're a great headset for everyday use though. Not so much a great headset for the range though. Definitely found myself flinching again with these, so very interesting. All right, let's put these down and then move on to our next headset. And I actually used this headset exclusively for the first year we ran the channel. And those are the Peltor Sport Tactical 300s. Peltor, Peltor Sport 300s? Whatever, whatever, the 300s. And some of you smart folks at home may already be saying that the Peltor 300s are actually cheaper than the Emacs Shadows, but I'm including an upgrade on these, which is the Noise Fighters. And I really think that transforms this headset and makes it significantly better, so we're gonna include that in the cost. Looking at the Peltor 300s, they look a bit innocuous, but these headsets really pack a punch in terms of features. Starting with the headband, we see it's mostly plastic with little to no padding. These headsets use a common profile though, so I added a headset wrap from Grim Hunter Tactical. And you can actually disconnect the headband if you want to install a different one, or if you want to connect it into a helmet. I'll, I'll show you how to do all that. But the included headband works well to both collapse the whole headset down nicely and give you a wide range of adjustment for different size heads. Moving down the headset, the earpieces themselves are just the smallest bit on the large side, but use a nice plastic finish with easy to use buttons and a battery tray. The microphone is hidden on the front of either side and the power button is located on the rear of the right side ear cup. The right side ear cup also has all your volume controls. Just tap the super large up arrow to go up and the large arrow to go down. And I really like these oversized buttons as it's really easy to make adjustments on these, even with a gloved hand. And I have no idea what clicking the P does. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if you know what that does. I'm assuming it's something for the Bluetooth model. And maybe I should talk about the Peltor 500s as the 500s in this series have Bluetooth on them. The Bluetooth on a lot of these headsets are a gimmick. They're, they're somewhere between half crap and half useless. You can hear your phone just fine if you needed to communicate with someone if you just put it near the speaker. And it costs a whole lot more to get that halfway crappy Bluetooth feature added onto your headsets. So I don't recommend you get the 500s, just stick with the 300s and yeah, skip Bluetooth. Continuing on the right ear cup, there is also a USB connection for when we use their rechargeable batteries along with a 3.5 millimeter jack. So then it's really easy to connect these headsets into some of those comm setups that we showed you in our comm setup video that I'll link up here with some of the setups that we got from Comm Gear Supply. And Comm Gear Supply actually has a new comm connection where you don't need an adapter for the two pin. It's just straight 3.5 millimeter jack on the end of it. 
All right, back to our headset. On the left side of the 300s, you'll find the easy to access battery tray that also has a cool Peltor Sport 300 logo on it. Opening this thing up, you can see here the orientation of the two AA batteries. The cover is also connected with a small, thin plastic bit, so you don't lose it if you're opening this at the range or outdoors. Moving down to the bottom of each of the headset is a nice rubber edge that makes it really nice to set the headsets down on. And as I mentioned earlier, I upgraded my Peltor 300s to the Noise Fighter Gel Cups, and I highly recommend you do the same if you get these headsets. These gel cups are significantly better than the normal crappy padding that comes with most of these headsets, and it lets you use them for hours upon hours. And the noise fighters have a nice ridge on the top to allow for safety or prescription glasses to fit comfortably. And when I mentioned earlier those kids who don't do particularly well in loud areas, these are the headsets that I use. And the gel cups really work well in providing that additional comfort and a quality seal, particularly on a little one. Looking at the function of the Peltor 300s, all you have to do is hold down the power button on the back to turn them on, and the nice lady comes over nice and loud. Power on. To tell you that they're on. Use the volume buttons to control the volume, and it has a nice audible beep. Now, one of the biggest difference you're gonna notice from these in terms of volume compared to the Sordans is that these don't really go any louder than ambient volume. Well, maybe ever so slightly louder, but they really max out at about a normal hearing and conversational volume. All right, so our first category for these is gonna be price, and I give these two stars as we start to get up there a little bit in terms of price. As we have the headsets around 80 to $100, and the noise fighters around $50. The value you get for these is absolutely awesome though. And you could get them cheaper without the noise fighter gel cups, but don't, don't do that. This is an absolutely awesome setup. Okay then, for our next test is comfort, and I give these four stars. These gel cups are incredibly comfortable. You can easily wear them for four or five hours and forget you have them on entirely. It's an insane jump over the normal crappy foam padding. And I did ding them a star, even though they're super comfortable, for being a little bit bulky. And that may be unfair, <laughs> but oh well. Just know that they are crazy comfortable. All right, then moving to our next test, which is the noise reduction rating, I give these a five. These little monsters sport a noise reduction rating of 26. It's a pretty wild difference between a lot of the other headsets we've seen. And it's absolutely noticeable out on the range as when you increase in caliber, you still don't hear anything. Okay, moving to our next test is indoor shooting and I again give these a five. I used these headsets for a long time when I first started and I originally only shot indoors. I double up with some Safari Land in-ear when shooting indoors, and it makes for a great combination with the Peltor 300s. Large or small caliber indoors, I never had an issue with sound bite with this headset. Okay then, our next test is outdoor shooting, and yep, they get a five again. I use these outdoor a lot, like a whole lot, and they always perform fantastic. I never found they got in the way of a proper cheek weld, and they did great while outdoors for any of the various calibers I used. And now we get into where these Peltors really, really shine, and that's sound quality, and I give these a five. And I should give some background here. Sometimes me and my kiddos test out all these headsets, and we see how incredibly bad some of them are, but then sometimes, they're so insanely good, you don't believe it. And you won't believe these Peltor 300s. The sound isn't like listening to a speaker at all. It sounds almost exactly the same as having them on or off. And this is the sound of my voice using our Rode DJI microphone without it being inside the headset. And this is the sound of my voice using the active hearing on the Peltor Sport 300s on our DJI omnidirectional microphone. It sounds really similar. Not exactly sure why this sounded so muffled, so let me try that again. All right, then once again, here's a test of our DJI omnidirectional microphone with the active hearing protection on our Peltor Sport 300s. And hopefully you can hear how clean and crisp this is. It doesn't sound all muffled like that first test did. 
I even opened a door and closed it just to hear how it sounded exactly the same. All those teeny tiny nuances of a sliding glass door. With other headsets, it can sometimes just sound off, like you're listening to a recording of a door opening. And the omnidirectional sound quality is so good that it's super easy to tell exactly where a sound is coming from. All right then, so for our last category of other use cases, yeah, again, they get a five. Now, I didn't find myself reaching for these when doing basic tasks like running or mowing the lawn, but the normal adapter clips allow them to use other pelt or helmet attachment methods to easily connect to a bump or ballistic helmet. This gives you some really good hearing protection and ability to hear everything around you that could then be joined into like a safety helmet or be used in a tactical scenario. And if you use it on a ballistic helmet, it's easy to use the 3.5 millimeter jack to connect into a whole radio setup. And for the last big one, this headset with its insane sound reproduction, omnidirectional listening, and super comfortable gel cups make these great for kids who don't do well in loud spaces. And they have worked wonders for my son, absolute wonders. All right then, let's move on to our last headset with our big boy, the Sword and Supreme Pro X LED. Starting with the features, the Sword and Supreme Pro X LEDs come with a wrapped headband as a purchasing choice, or you can just use the basic strap. I again got an upgraded strap from Grim Hunter Tactical to gain some additional comfort. Looking at the earpieces, you can see that you can get these in multiple colors, as I have mine in Multicam, for full on cool guy points. But you could also get them in black, green, or even safety orange. The outer shell is a nice low profile plastic, that is similar to our Peltor 300s we saw, but with a much smaller overall profile. And I did a full video on these already, so if you want me to go into way more detail, I'll link to that actual video up here. So we'll just actually gloss over some of the features since I've talked about them already. On the front of the headsets are two omnidirectional microphones to give you full stereo sound. And yes, it sounds absolutely phenomenal. And on the rear of the headset is an external knob to access the battery tray that holds two AA batteries. And some folks hate this, but I didn't have any trouble. Just know that the two batteries actually like stack on top of each other. So you have to put the first one in and then kind of push it down with a punch or something so you can slide in the second battery. It's not that bad, really. The Sordans also include a 3.5 millimeter jack to connect into external music, a radio, or a PTT. And the front of the headset also includes an LED on the front of the left ear cup. All right, let's dig into the operation of these headsets. To turn them on, you just hold down the center power and they give you a tone to let you know they've turned on. You can then press either the up or down buttons to increase or decrease volume and you have an audible tone. To turn on the front LED, you simply press the plus and minus buttons together and hold for one second. So you won't just randomly turn the LED on, you have to purposely engage it in order to turn it on. All right, so let's go into our first category of price and I give these a one star. As they're our last headset, they are the most expensive in our current lineup and sport a price of about $270 to $290. And you can get a little cheaper with the non-LED version, but the LED version comes with the gel cups. And as we saw with the Peltor 300s, you absolutely want those. So then we move on to comfort, and these little badass guys get five stars. With the included gel cups, we see some absolutely amazing comfort. Just straight out of the box, you have a headset you can wear all day without any hotspots. This level of comfort would work great as a helmet mounted solution for long patrols. And I've gone out for like six or eight hour recording and shooting sessions, and these have never gotten uncomfortable. All right, then for our next test is gonna be our noise reduction rating, and I give these a four. Now the Sordans say on paper that they're a 19 noise reduction rating, but a 25 SNR, which makes me realize there's some snake oil with the whole noise reduction rating scores. I was able to shoot both large and small caliber with no bite or issue at all. I'd even say they muffle the most sound out of all of the headsets I've used. So then the Peltor 300 say they're a 26, and the Sword and Supreme Proxes say they're a 19, 
but I can't tell a difference between the two, and if I did, I'd say the Swordens had more hearing protection. <laughs> but I think the conversation of the truthfulness of noise reduction rating is a conversation for a different day, so let's move on to indoor shooting protection, and these little badasses get a five. With the ability to throw in foamies or Safari Land earplugs, it's easy to double up indoors and still be able to hear everything. The lower profile of these headsets make them more preferable for indoor use. I know it's probably all in my head, but I don't feel like I'm gonna clobber everything like I do when I use the Peltor 300s. All right then, let's move to our next test, and that's the outdoor shooting, and again, these get a five. These little guys do fantastic outdoors from small to large caliber. The seal of the gel cup works well to keep your ears protected, even when jumping around or doing fast dynamic movements on the range. And I've been using my Swordens exclusively for about the, oh, I don't know, five or six months, and they're my absolute go-to. Okay, so let's move on to our next category, which is sound quality, and they absolutely crush this category with five stars. Much like the Peltor 300s, the Sword and Supreme Pro Xs offer an almost perfect sound reproduction of all the sound around you, making it almost indiscernible that you're even wearing the headsets. With one big difference, the Peltors can go over normal hearing volume, which you can't do on the Peltor 300s. And with the Swordens, that can sometimes result in white noise or sounds that you don't normally hear that may be loud inside the headset. And if that white noise for some reason bothers you, you can always just turn it down. But from a tactical or hunting perspective, I found that added hearing was super useful. Again, this is the sound of my voice using our DJI omnidirectional microphone outside of our headset. And this is the sound of my voice using the active hearing protection of our Sword and Supreme Pro X LEDs and our DJ omnidirectional microphone. It, it's pretty loud to have it turned up, but I'll tell you what, I can hear everything. I can even hear my own footsteps. <laughs> and you may be wondering how discernible the difference is between the Swordens and the Peltors in terms of sound quality. And at the same volume, I'd say they're almost indiscernible. They both recreate sound amazingly well. But one of them isn't like a wild jump in quality over the other. The increase in volume over ambient is pretty huge though. All right, then moving to our last category, which is other use cases. I give these a four, but for some interesting reasons. Now, due to the cost, the other use cases of these are fairly low. I certainly don't use these for mowing the lawn or using a chainsaw, but I do use them for every single range trip. The Sword and Supreme Pro X also makes for a great hearing setup when paired with the PTT, like the ones we showed from Comgear Supply with the 3.5 millimeter jack. Interestingly, the Sword and Pro X is also the base used for the T headset high threat headsets with integrated comms, and I connect that high threat headset setup into my OpsCore SF helmet and a U92 push to talk, which gives an out of this world setup with great hearing and insane comfort. All right, though, let's go over the use cases that I think each person would use for each headset and their final scores. Starting with the Caldwell Emacs Shadows, these would be perfect for someone who wants to do a lot of running or working out in conjunction with low amounts of shooting. Training for things like tactical games would be perfect for these headsets, mostly running around with some shooting here or there outside. Just <laughs> don't use them indoors. All right, next we have our Peltor 300s. These headsets are great for anyone that spends more than three hours on the range or someone who wants a top tier level of sound quality at a fraction of the cost. The Peltors also work great as an entry level option for anyone looking to mess around with integrated comms on a headset due to the commonality of Peltor helmet connection points. And again, I'll mention these Peltor 300s are just the sweet spot for the younger ones, or hell, the older ones that may struggle in loud spaces. If it's too much, they can just turn it down, and that control over the space they're in is really key. All right, then we got our last one. We got our Sword and Supreme Pro X LEDs. These are a great headset if you're at the range for periods over five or six hours. 
If you have a profession where you wear hearing protection on a regular basis, these are absolutely wonderful. Taking Sorden's big brother, the high threats from T headset, and using them in a headset and comm situation is a total dream, as it sounds crystal clear, has that tactical low profile, and includes comfort to get you through day upon day. Well, I hope seeing some of the different headsets and the various price ranges and all the different features has helped you find that sweet spot for the perfect headset for you. And I'll put a link down in the description for all the headsets we talked about in this part two video, along with all the ones from the part one video also. And I will tell you, I do have even more headsets that we can get to eventually. So sound off down in the comments if you wanna see more headsets. Hopefully it doesn't take me a year to get to the part three of this video though. All right, everyone, I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. You're the ones that make all this possible and I love you for it. And thanks to everybody that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what headset you would pick. All right, everyone, Walsh out. There's a party going on. I wonder if you can hear that.